clock on the wall says 515, so we will go ahead and call the meeting to order. It is November 2nd, time for the regular City Council meeting of Harlan. So Jane, if you would please take roll call. Kroger, here. Blatt. Here. Peterson. Here. Christensen. Here. Rudolph. Here. Shaven. Here. Thank you. Okay, you all receive the agenda in advance. Are there any questions or comments regarding the agenda? I don't see any, so I look for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Second. Sorry. Motion by Kroger and second by Rudolph. Roll call Kroger. Aye. Blatt. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Rudolph. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Thank you. And I would ask that you please state any conflicts of interest if they arise this evening. Item number two is our consent agenda, and tonight's uh, consent agenda includes the minutes of the October 19th council meeting and claims list number 1253 in the amount of $146,553.72. Hopefully you all had a chance to review those. Any questions? Anything, Jane, you want to point out on this one? Consent um, agenda? No, Nothing I don't. Nothing out of the ordinary. There's okay. um, a couple items that... Um, I know you had inquired uh, the um, USDA grant for the emergency equipment. Some of the uh, couple items were purchased on there with that with okay. that money. That was very good. If there are no other questions, then I look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Motion by Christensen. Second. And second by Shaven. Roll call. Kroger. Aye. Blatt. Aye. Peterson. Peterson? Can you hear us, Richard? You're on mute, Richard. Oh. <laughs> oh, just move on. We'll carry on. Have a no vote. Okay, Christensen? Mm -hmm. Aye. Rudolph? Aye. Shaven? Aye. Okay, consent agenda is approved. Item number three then is to review the completion and award request for Barry Duell at the Flower Barn for his downtown upper story facade grant at 624 Market Street. And you had some photos and information in your packet. Gee, any additional information? Be the building looks beautiful. Yes, uh, corner there at 6th and Market, 7th and Market. Um, the duels have continued to, over the past few years, uh, applying or have been eligible for continued improvements. Uh, once again, we're blessed to have the facades and upper story downtown. Don't uh, don't critique the uh, photographer here, but uh, we've been trying to show some before and after photos and uh, couldn't quite get a, a clear view, but I think you'll see the two primary items that were included with this was, if you look at uh, where the cursor is, there were the two front windows still boarded up uh, with two primary beneficiaries or improvements for this last uh, work on that building. And so that was the before. And uh, with uh, the improvements, you can see the new windows here. Looks a lot better than plywood and uh, unfinished. So another example of uh, the program that we've continued and you've supported and I know with next year's budget, we're going to make a similar recommendation. But nothing else I have to add. Okay, and that amount is for $1,730.19. Yes, $1,730.19. Any questions for this award? If not, I'd ask for a motion to approve. Motion. So, motion by Kroger with a second by Blatt. Roll call Kroger. Aye. Blatt. Aye. Peterson. And it looked like he had a connection issue, so he's not connected right now, so. Christensen? Aye. Rudolph? <coughs> Aye. Shaven? Aye. Very good, that takes us on to item 3B tonight uh, to look at resolution number 2471 to set a public hearing date of November 16th to consider a proposed sale of city-owned real estate located at 1901 Hawkeye Avenue. And Gene, I will let you lead off with this information. Uh, yes, we have uh, some guests here, which I'll turn over to in just a moment, but wanted to introduce and provide some background um, with council over the past few years. We collectively, uh, throughout the year, as well as with our capital planning sessions each year, we've evaluated what uh, may be long-term use and best utilization of the space 
on the north half of the facility at 1901 Hawkeye. Uh, interestingly enough, and in talking with, uh, and some of you have had similar experiences, is uh, community members drive by the facility. Again, this is on the east side as you head south of town. A majority of folks tend to think that 100% of that facility is where the college is at. And uh, Iowa Western does a fantastic job. Um, yet, uh, when that facility was built back in the mid to late, uh, actually late 2000s, um, the south half has been occupied by the college. The north half was intended for uh, incubator and development space. Um, and we've again evaluated since that incubation concept didn't uh, fully take fruition um, and we've had uh, space there underutilized. Um, Todd and his team have been out there which has been uh, certainly a great location for them. Uh, yet is, uh, between council and our public property we've been kicking around uh, what might look, that look like to best reap the benefits for the community in the region. And uh, with that kind of fast forward to and at this point uh, turn it over to Dr. Kinney with Iowa Western to uh, explain what uh, we transfer this property, what the intention and the, and the vision is. So, so Gene, thanks. Uh, Dr. Kinney, President of uh, Iowa Western Community College. Tonight we got Randy Bash, who represents you guys on the uh, Iowa Western uh, Community College Board from, from the season. Lori Stetz, you can find no Lori, so you probably see her around a little bit more. And then Eddie Holtz, who's our uh, Vice President for Business Affairs. Great to be here this evening. Uh, we're definitely interested in this. So a little bit of background on myself. Uh, one of the pushes I've had in you know education is really trying to start career academies. How how do we incite youth early on into careers to keep them in our communities? And, and I'd say, you know, a lot of studies I've seen out there, 70% of jobs in rural America now are requiring a two-year or less certificate. Okay, and uh, so with this space, it'll allow us to expand and provide that to our youth. I know Dr. Barnett's in here. We've had some conversations. Well, prior to, I think she had just accepted a job when I kind of approached her saying, hey, I know you're going up that way. What are your thoughts on this? And uh, I think it's a great opportunity. How do we expose our youth? Uh, you know, we can put welding programs in five high schools with five kids, but I could put them in one with 25. First of all, we're going to be saving some money to our local taxpayers, you know, by putting that together. Together, really working with business and industry to help drive what we do in our curriculum. Because I, what I want the opportunities for these youth, these young individuals coming out, one exploratory. What do I really want to do? They're not always ready to go and say, okay, this is exactly what I'm doing. Here I go. So it gives them that opportunity. But it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, I'm going to get enough credits or certificate while in high school that I could go directly to the workplace or I could transfer on and, and get my bachelor's or come to Iowa Western and get their associates and on to their bachelor's degree. So it gives them some opportunities. It gives them exploratory. So what my opinion is, is that in that, I say north half, is the ability to go ahead and start offering some of those, working very closely with our local high schools to be able to do that, to give these youth some opportunities and look. You know, uh, the experience that I really probably got at this last year, um, you know, I had a, a young daughter who just didn't know what she wanted to do. She was at Iowa Western Community college she hated school since kindergarten will not lie I, I mean that was that child but she never had that exploratory she didn't know what she wanted to do and it was her well start of her second semester at Iowa West and we're just sitting there talking and you know she's at cosmetology school today I'm excited about that she's in a career technical education and I've never seen that child more excited about it so I want the ability to be able to give those youth those opportunities early on I, I mean my hopes are is we're really we're going to deal with them at the college level junior and senior senior years I'm not wanting to supplant what's happening at the school districts I want to supplement already what our schools here locally are doing within their school districts it may be giving them an opportunity to take a welding instructor that they have push them down and allow welding seventh eighth ninth and tenth grade to where right now they're only doing it ninth tenth eleventh and twelfth grade so starting to get their minds working so I think that's number one and really the push on me in regards this property. Number two, though, is we have a lot of adult learners out there that need to go back and get retrained. We're bringing businesses in our community that need an opportunity for space to train. So when it's not being utilized, 
in our current status with, with our college students or more with the high school students, the ability to open up that space to do training for local businesses that may need something rather than have them coming to, unfortunately right now, Council Bluffs the closest to do it, being able to do that here locally, but also put some things on in the evenings to take individuals that say, hey, I want to get into welding and move up so they can get that certificate, non-credit and credit side uh, when it comes to it. The other, I think, really good partnership I'm, I'm gonna say is we're really working with your chamber and your local economic development um, I started a career academy a few years ago in Lorenz Iowa and if you've never been in Lorenz Iowa it's a really small community with three major corporations and when we tied with this with the with the economic development chamber arm we're able to as they're in working with businesses they're kind of representing us when we're in we're with them so I think it's going to really help to grow that opportunity to see what we can bring to Harlan and our region to grow the businesses that we currently have within there. So questions you all have of me on this. I know that's a quick overview. I, I, I could go on for the next three hours if you wanted because I do get excited in these topics. But questions you all have of me. You, I know you talked I, about welding. Is there yep. any, any other... So yeah, you're going to look at? so uh, when you start putting a career academy in, is a number one you're working with your school districts, and I haven't had that opportunity yet because we didn't have the space. Now we're going to have the space, but we'll start working with the school districts, kind of where we're at. But it's really important to be driven by local businesses and the local communities. I need to be out talking to them. What are their needs? I'm going to say welding is one of those we know everybody needs right now. But let's say I flood the market with welders. We have to been be able on a drop of a dime change and get to. Lathan Mills or Auto or whatever. But no, we're going to look at multiple, not just welding. I know I advanced manufacturing. I know I threw that one out there because that's the key one a lot of people hear. But I think there'll be some opportunities. Diesel tech, logistics. We're already doing some CNA. We do some electrical in there, construction, HVAC. A lot of different programs that we can bring into it. But number one, assess the community needs, work with our partners in our school districts and what they're looking for, and definitely working with our local business and industry of, of driven so we'll put uh, as we create a career academy we'll put an advisory board which is will include local business leaders into that to help us drive the direction that we're going when they're seeing something changing we got to be changing too as I always say I want to be on the cutting edge not the bleeding edge I don't want to be so far ahead of them that I'm out there but I need to be a little bit ahead of them of what they're doing so that we can bring the workforce for them to the community or keep our workforce really mm -hmm. so for our local business um, leaders here mm -hmm. do they contact Lori or who would they contact if they're interested in getting on board uh, Lori or me, probably Lori, she can keep kind of around, right? I'm doing a lot of these types of things, but probably Lori, uh, you know, once we get kind of moving on this, we're going to, well, we're going to get moving pretty quick. Uh, I can't say, we've got some started up and going that we're doing in the center. By the time we do a little bit of renovation, probably not a ton, which is nice, uh, you know, next fall is my hope to make sure we have some tracks off and going, getting with the school districts, get that going. Uh, hopefully we can have some training going even l earlier, or I should say earlier prior to that academy up and going. But I'd say Lori's probably the best contact on that right now right now since she's our center director up this way thank you i would just add some personal experience i've got five kids and my my youngest just graduated last year went through one of the programs with harlan it was at iowa western and Lori. his name he mentioned her name a lot he mentioned your name you missed him by a month he went to another school i know he would have, he would have come to yours but you he made a decision to go but uh he was impressed you guys took him down and they showed everybody down yeah. Iowa western and uh so you're doing a good job well, we got we had eight last year we got 15 so she's done a good job yeah. you know funny story about that you know unfortunately we did miss him and then we missed a few of those uh, i think we had eight in there and that day i when eddie was there boy i think when we asked that question who's come to Iowa western not one of them was at that time right one. one was and we ended up I think getting about half of them down there but but yeah unfortunately we did been here six he months ago he, 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 he talked about changing and then he said now there was a little bit more where he ended up at DMAC, DMAC, DMAC and, that's what I was thinking yeah, so yeah. but yeah so the group yeah. Program over there too but it, the it, you are, know and that's what concerns me is the students that do leave our area guess what 
the businesses that come in and recruit into our pro or into our programs to go to work for them are going to be in DMAC. They're going to stay in Des Moines. We're not going to get them back home. And that's what always concerns me. And that's where these type of career academies, I think, have been important. I, I, this will be, well, I've, one, two, three, this will be my fourth or fifth one that I've started in a 10-year career. So. I think it's a great, great idea. Um, I've also got another son who's an electrician in Des Moines. Des Moines yep. That's one of the reasons he, my son went that way. But he's working with the high school of Johnston's doing the same yep. thing. They kind of partner with these businesses and they let these kids, I don't know what's called, what's called MRC, I think, when I was back in school. I don't know what they do. It's job training to the school. Work based learning now. Yep, and now he's, the he's got a young man, going to work with him to be a, a helper. And, uh, and well, I'm, I'm hoping to, I mean, I'd love to have my kids come back here, but so far I'm one for five. So, uh, <laughs> well, if I would have been here one month earlier. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that one. So, he still may end up back here. So, but you, you know what it is, is we start getting, even as our junior years, to be able to go out and do some more base learning, work in the summers, find those extra jobs. Because we're going to put them in skill sets that can get them out there that, you know, that they can get some hands-on, but the need for our businesses. Now, what also drives it is OSHA. I mean, age and, and different things like that we run in. Some corporations are good to go to 16. Some, it's got to be 18, so it doesn't always help. But, you know, we'll work with them and see what we can do. But getting them out there, getting the hands-on, um, you know, as I, I go back to the, the daughter I talked about, I, I mean, she was a hands-on learner. You know, she was not to be lectured at. And it, it, that's what we need to give these youth today. And we're getting more and more of them because they're hands-on are these. You know, we got to get them off of those and get them hands-on in, into career tracks or pathways, as I call them. You know, you, you mentioned age. Mm -hmm. that, that is a, a hiccup in yep. a lot of those um, positions. Yep. You know, my company in particular, not my company, the company I work for, but age is a limit, yeah. a limitation for us. And, and yeah. somehow we also have to get to those legislators that they maybe need to look at these things because that's that age group, again, coming out of high yeah. school, we can't tap into because of the age limit. But I, I, I think in the state of Iowa, that has been lifted. It's going to be your insurance company and your corporate headquarters. The liars do not still. I, offline, we can talk a little yeah, bit you, more. Yeah. I will because I've already been into this battle with, yep. well, with legislators and even in D.C. and the DOL a little bit, too. Because you're right. Mm -hmm. Their workforce, they, they're there. But then we put some limitations on what we can and can't do with them. So. Yep. Well, I would say we had a group of, from your industrial tech class that came out two weeks ago, and uh, I'd say all of them raised their hands, said they would like to have more opportunities for more learning at an academy. So I thought that was you know, obviously um, without yeah. telling of the other things, but knowing hey, uh, most of them kids would like to have you know more space and hopefully more opportunities than us that have the larger businesses that may benefit from it, and how do we contribute to it and kind of grab the students who don't want to go off to college right away or go to DMAC and how can we keep them closer yeah. potentially for those that want to stay. But we have the same age limit where we're 18, you have to be 18 to even yeah. roll the graphs for us, by the way. I mean, so. Yeah, I know. That's, it, it, that, those are things we've got to try to overcome and do different things. So. And I know, Doctor, you've been involved with these career academies before and understand it. So, got the right team on the bus right now. We need the space now. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Anybody else like to speak? Todd or Doctor or Doctor Barnett or anybody want to add comments? You're welcome to. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> I just want to. I just appreciate the fact that you're considering this, and and that Iowa Western is going to be a partner with us because I do think, just like um, Mr. Shaven had said that he has come out and we've got a partnership with Conductix as well, already working with the welding programs. And if we can do the HVAC and and do some of the programs this way, and even think. Even in-house, what can we do? If we do have kids that do want to go on the four-year track, what can we do for them? And what can we do for for all kids, basically? So, and, and to get that certificate and have it before you even graduate, and then just think, you can just take off um, with that. So I just appreciate you. We, we are very excited to partner with them. Thank you. I'll just, uh, just say again, you know, we all know that one of the number one problems we have here in Iowa is workforce. And it's not completely just 
bodies, it's also keeping them here. You know, <laughs> so this is this is going to be a fantastic partnership for our local area. It's going to not only help with our current businesses we have here, but again, we we've talked before about the things that we need to do in our community to make it an attraction for people to come here, and this is going to be a big attraction for not only individuals to come here and possibly get retrained to be able to fit into the business industry that we have here now, but it'll be an attraction to bring industry this way when they know that we have this private-public partnership that takes place here with our, our career academy. So this is going to be, like I said, this is going to be a game changer. This is going to be fantastic for us. And Todd or, or Dr. Kinney, any thoughts on employment? How many instructors will this add out there, or is that way too early to even? Think about something like that. We'll get that question. So I yeah, I, I can't say. I, I can tell you right off the bat. I mean, we'll see numbers, how we grow, stuff like that. Um, no, I couldn't give you that answer okay. right now. But you know, one thing that Dr. Barnett said that she's got a good welding lab up there. So do we put welding in there, or do we still utilize what she has there? I mean, that's where we've got to get together mm -hmm. and look at. So keep welding there. We expand it to something else in the, at the Career Academy. So. And I think we could build a well. We can yeah. collaborate with them still and invite other districts oh, yeah. to our our building in the welding program, and then offer two or three different things. Um, or offer some other things at the Atlantic and Western and, and share. So we're not duplicating efforts and providing more opportunities for kids. Right. A question that has come up, kids drive in, that's left up to the school district. Some will bus them in, some will allow them to drive in, but that's always left up to the districts themselves. So. And we, as you know, we've had a good exchange already with the chemical. Uh, lab out there with some oh, school yeah. districts coming up and using that. So we already have an experience with other school districts coming in to use the facility. So good. Thank you for the information. Any other questions, from council members? I would just have a few final thoughts and um, again, thinking back to uh, the, those back in the two thousands that um, got together and, and thought big. And at that time, I was when Iowa Western was on 12th Street. Uh, for the folks that may or may not remember, that Iowa Western was located where the public hill space is. And you know, with their growing pains at that time, and getting other you know, community leaders to make that facility happen, um, and so great vision on their part. And now we're what 13, 14 years later, and this is the re as I look towards it as a reinvented 2020 and beyond use. Uh, for this space in a, in a very healthy and uh, vibrant and exciting way. I did reach out, um, and again, first of all, it's been just through the process thus far, been great working with uh, all the partners on this. You know, I had an opportunity to reach out, uh, as some of you know, to the initial supporters of that project back in the mid-2000s, and those I've spoken with. Uh, just uh, giving them uh, a little bit of snippet of what the intention is here and 100% support to many of the items that uh, Dr. King has just shared. And uh, in conclusion, some of you heard me share, may have heard me share this also, that um, it just seemed like each conversation we had, another box got checked and that box was called win. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, win here, win here, win here. You know, the Chamber of Industry is going to remain there, the value seen in that. Uh, working with the school district and, and other districts, um, just the, the number of check boxes in the wind column the, the, to this point have been phenomenal. So um, those would be my additional thoughts, and excited to see uh, where this can go in a few weeks and get this transitioned. Very good. Anybody else any comments? Okay. Well, with that, then uh, what resolution twenty four seventy one says is that the the city would sell the property, the north half of that building, for one dollar to Iowa Western, uh, with along with some stipulations. And uh, is, is again the conversation among council members and, and staff has been that the value in this is for the students and the businesses and the community as a whole, not necessarily monetary. Um, so it is for a dollar to, to sell. We will set the public hearing in uh, for November 16th with this resolution uh, to consider this sale. So I look for a motion to approve that hearing date. So moved. Thank you. Motion by Blatt. And a second by Shaben. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if yes. I could just add one prior to your final vote here. Um, 
an additional item in that purchase, which um, is that it, you know, what did you say, Doc, again, every, every five or so years, it seems like even education is reinventing itself. Um, so that's not the, the forecast. Yet if something does change direction, that within that purchase, uh, there is that option for the city to reacquire that for a dollar. So I think that's important for, again, there was just another win that made sense for the community, uh, that property, its location, et cetera. So uh, I wanted to share that yep. before your final vote in the community. The collaboration well. with all of our conversations has been really good, so. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. So Jane, if you want to take roll call, please. Kroger. Aye. Blatt. Aye. Peterson, yeah. So I've been able to rejoin. Christensen. Aye. Rudolph. Aye. Shaben. Aye. <clears throat> Motion carries. Thank you very much. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you'd like. If you don't feel obligated, but it's pretty um, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> especially adding three C. My part. Especially yeah. adding three C, which where is where we are now to receive and file the airport commission meeting minutes from October 27th. And you all received those in your packet. There are no questions regarding that. I would look for a motion to receive and file. Motion. Motion Sorry. by Rudolph. Second by Shaben. Roll call Kroger? Aye. Blatt? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Rudolph? Aye. Shaven? Aye. Very good. And then related to that, item 3D is resolution 2472 to approve professional engineering services for the 2022 airport taxi lane improvement project. And Gene, I'll let you give us a few details on that again. Uh, this agreement is with our airport engineer. The entire agreement was in your packet. Um, Councilperson Kroger has been the liaison the, the past few years. I believe she can attest to, and Mayor Colby attends uh, most all those meetings. The uh, continued uh, desire for the commission and the manager to continue improvements there. And with the FAA, FAA funding of 90%, um, and with this last year 100% funding, um, the desire is to continue those improvements. This, this is specific to the application that was made last fall. And just real quick, visually, what that looks like. Um, so what's currently uh, forecast for next spring is this uh, is the apron rehab. That's this area here in gray. Uh, what the FAA likes to see is uh, the airside pavement needs and being sure airside pavement needs are in uh, top notch and good condition. So for this project, it is here in the terminal taxiway area, so the red and green. Uh, so this engineering agreement in the uh, current application of the FA is for the red area, and then uh, the green area would be the next phase after that. And this engineering agreement is 119,000. Uh, construction is estimated around 300,000, um, and we believe by uh, going out to bid next spring there may be some economies of scale we can get with the Aiken Rehab Project if bids come in, come in favorably. Uh, Kirk and Michael's been our engineer and planner there for 20 plus years. And uh, that's what that agreement represents. And we, uh, so the commission acted on this the other day. It needs final blessing from you before it goes on to the FAA. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none then, I look for a motion to uh, approve resolution 2472 as presented. Motion. Motion Second. by Kroger, second by Christensen. Roll call Kroger. Aye. Blatt. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Rudolph. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Okay, item uh, 3E then is to revise the posting of our uh, fire engine for sale of 1993. And Gene or Jane, do you want to give us a little story yes. on this? Uh, this is the uh, 1993 uh, engine that we had uh, posted and advertised through various sites and uh, publications. We had a minimum bid of 25000 We received one interested inquiry. We did not receive a formal bid. Um, would like uh, to ask for your uh, motion to re-advertise it with a minimum of 10000 We did follow up with the interested party. Uh, they're not making an offer at this point. And then uh, we're also exploring a, a site called govdeals.com of network some other, with some other cities, clerks, and colleagues that uh, just had a call with them yesterday. Um, but even with that site, and that's an online auction site for uh, public surplus items. It's not one we've used for yet, used before yet. Um, I believe we would do one, one we would consider with re-advertising. But would, uh, more or less was giving an update and ask for you to at least suggest we re-advertise re with no less than a minimum bid of 10000 
Okay. What happened to the company that we bought the new fire truck from? I thought they were going to help with the resale. Uh, we did look at that agreement, and that wasn't part of the specific services, and, um, and I don't see anything online that they have. If you found other, I'd please share that. I'm not aware of that. Okay. And looking at the Gov deal site, just you know, trying to do some compare and contrast. Um, saw some other fire equipment out there. I believe there were 41 postings for other fire equipment currently on the Gov deal site, and. Um, some uh, quite a few uh, rolling stock that is similar to ours that seem to be in that 15 to 20,000, sometimes less in terms of the minimum bids they're looking for. So, no chance we'll have a fire engine repair program anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about a fire site, I'm not gonna lie on that one. <laughs> Good connection, a yeah, fire truck yeah. put out the fire yeah. <laughs> on site, ready to go. Anything, Jane, you would add to that and then uh, continue on this question? No, just we did hear from some cities that have had a success with advertising on Go. Okay. okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, I'd look for a motion then to uh, approve the posting of the Sneal fire engine for $10,000 minimum. Yes. Motion. Second. Motion by Blatt, second by Christensen. Roll call Kroger. Aye. Blatt. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Rudolph. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Motion carries. Moves us on to city administrator's report. I told Dr. Kenny that we're usually in 30 to 45 minutes, yet I do have a three hour report tonight. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> he will make it. <laughs> um, provide some updates, uh, things going on within our teams, and uh, a few other updates. Um, fall weather's upon us, so street sweepers out in full force. I just noticed the last few days it seems like more and more leaves have fallen the last two days, so eventually we'll uh, get all the leaves cleaned up. The yard waste site, uh, uh, we've had no instances the last two weeks, so I think we went through a major hiccup there for a short while, but appreciate the public's cooperation and attentiveness in the proper use of that site. Uh, the uh, uh, reminder that the restrooms and the parks uh, were now closed down for the winter, so those have been winterized. Uh, just this past weekend, um, I'd like to we have wanted to close out a few items here. Um, down at JJ uh, on Sunday, actually uh, had some staff down there Sunday, um, in which we Tom Connery with his, Tom Connery with his tree spade, uh, a few item a few trees from the uh, well field, so two new trees got planted down by the softball field, which uh, had to be come out due to um, disease or they were uh, dead. So two new trees were put in down at JJ last weekend, and uh, thanks to Com Tom Connery with the use of his, his spade and his uh, contribution there. Touched earlier about the uh, airport. Um, the activity there in the last month, uh, Scott Pigsley, our airport manager, continues to do a really solid job. They had an impromptu fly-in breakfast, and that was a few weeks ago. Had 14 planes fly in. Uh, nice, act actually great, great response. And those are 14 individual planes, not just the pilots and passengers. And Scott had mentioned that was the first time, at least in his tenure, and tenure, and as far as I can think back from. Uh, but the first time that our courtesy car, we do have the one courtesy car that's out there in which um, he needed a request for a second courtesy car. And again, you drive by our airport, and, and, and I already put the bug in a few of yours here also, is that uh, you know, we've got a great maybe partnership with getting young folks interested in aviation. Uh, we've got a great regional airport with a um, AP certified manager out there, so who knows what those opportunities could look like. And then the uh, last item of the airport is that it was reported also that the month of October saw more than double the fuel sales that have happened out there in the last five years. So um, just uh, con continued improvements out there. Update on uh, another property that I wish, uh, again, don't uh, be sure I pull up the right photo here first. Um, the 811 Willow property that we acquired and then we sold on contract. We had uh, four bidders. We took a slightly different, different approach with looking for development agreements. And 
Robert Barlow uh, made that purchase in what you all approved as an 18-month redevelopment. And I think his new middle name is Speedy because his redevelopment was done in less than four months. Uh, and um, you sure I've got them? Yeah, they took a finance class. Time value yeah. money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was in. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the exterior look before at 811 Willow. Um, wish we had some of the interior photos, but for some reason, <laughs> between Roger and myself, but um, so here. those are the pre-exterior photos. Here's one and two of the post-exterior photos. Uh -huh. So definitely clean up the property, siding, got rid of the dilapidated garage, and then uh, unfortunately uh, these photos will, I think a few of you may, you may have seen some interior photos on my phone previously. Yet, these are the post-interior photos. Nice. Um, I'll just... There's uh, a floor there. Uh, <laughs> yes, there's a floor there. As you may recall, it was um, quite the hoarder and two to three feet deep throughout the entire structure. And um, nice. so it, just a poster child of, of redevelopment. And uh, as we look to other opportunities like this, um, uh, this is a lower level that uh, ended up finishing out. Um, kept one of the brick walls for a little... Um, um, nice historical perspective, lower, lower restrooms. So just want to provide you an update and uh, how we might want to approach future properties like that. The library, um, I think I've got one other. Uh, just ha hats off to our library team. Uh, they, Amanda and the team there, and I believe you probably see it through other social media and in the newspaper, get the programming they provide. Um, Amanda and her team just continue to deliver. Uh, this Thursday's turkey bingo. Not sure what all that involves, but it's, it's a family night. So uh, when I saw that come across my updates, I just wanted to give a shout out to Amanda and her team with the uh, continued programs and, and delivery there. They do continue to have a part-time youth services clerk. So um, actually has some real ideal hours. Um, we're not immune to the challenges in the job market also, but if you know folks, please direct them to Amanda at the library. And the last two items I have are that uh, this week you we will see some activity at the uh, Dream Playground. You approved the agreement with Snyder and Associates to begin our uh, uh, survey and on-site planning, leading to conceptual master plan with the Dream Playground reimagined. Uh, so we expect some activity uh, survey work this week. And then uh, Mayor Colby and uh, Sarah Pepsel off the live uh, park board have been assembling a steering committee. Uh, and ideal number of can uh, people on that steering committee from the community is between 9 and 11, and I believe thus far they have nine recruited for a steering committee. So stay tuned on that, and uh, thanks Mayor Colby, and uh, shout out to Sarah for um, taking the lead on that. Yep. People have been very receptive to, the call, to answering the call to volunteer for that two-year project, so it's not a small commitment. Yes. And again, that's 27, 28 year old structure, and we've, it's, uh, in terms of our capital plan in the parks, that's the, uh, was the next big one on the docket, and we're getting that kicked off. That's all I have. I think that's pretty short, Greg. Uh, I'm out of here within a few hours. <laughs> but uh, comments or questions uh, that you may have for me? Questions for Gene? Otherwise, it's, pretty, it's been pretty quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Hanson House looks like it's exploding down there as far as what they're working on. Uh, yes, uh, the Hanson House e expansion there, um, 35,000 square foot. Actually, the amount of concrete they poured today, I'm just, <laughs> uh, I think most all of the concrete is poured after today. Uh, and their intention is uh, to uh, bring in panels, get those panels set, trusses, and then sheet it. Uh, having some conversations with them, they may look to use one of two, two of our lots across the way by the community garden to do some staging, and you may see an agreement in front of you at uh, one of the next two meetings. So I'll run that through, through you first. But yeah, that project's going well, and they've been a, a joy to work with. Any other questions? Thank you, Gene. Okay, for my report tonight, I would like to appoint, uh, ask for your approval to appoint Jim Shelton to the Harlem Municipal Utilities Board. It'd be a six-year term, which would end November 21st of 2027. And Jim is a quite accomplished individual, and I think he'll serve a 
great need on that board. So I'd like to, like to ask for your approval of his appointment. Is that replacing Terry? Yes, okay. Terry, Terry Arnes is, is coming off the board. A motion. Motion by Rudolph. Second by Shaven. Roll call. Croker? Aye. Blatt? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Rudolph? Aye. Shaven? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Jim Shelton, for serving on that board. Uh, I'll turn it over to Todd Bellin with the Shelby County Chamber if you'd like to update us with some information. Yeah, a couple of quick updates. Um, same thing I brought up at the supervisor's meeting this morning, but just a reminder, uh, not only to council, but to the public watching. There's a program here in Iowa, it's called Manufacturing 4.0. It's also sometimes referred to as Industry 4.0. And just recently, the governor committed uh, a lot of rescue plan dollars to that program. Uh, so it's for manufacturers that have less than 75 employees. And, and what we do with this program is we look at ways that we can automate your systems a little bit. So you might have employees that are doing repetitive things that could be automated and instead then we can use those employees to do something else within your facility. And there's two opportunities there. It can either be a um, actual machinery that you receive a grant for and it's a one-to-one -one match. So if you're a manufacturer and you're thinking about investing thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars into machinery, they would match that thirty, thirty-five thousand. Now you're investing seventy thousand in machinery. And the same thing on a software side. If you need a new inventory software, something along those lines, that's also available up to twenty-five thousand dollars. So I'm just reminding people that that program's out there, um, and they can contact our office. We'll get them in touch with Iowa State. We'll get the assessment started in regards to that. Um, the other thing is there's a new program, well, a program that's out there called Return to Rural. It's kind of a marketing program for your community. So we will be reaching out to local uh, uh, business leaders here to help us kind of plan what we want to do because you got to kind of pick an audience who you want to go after and, and what you're going to put on the table for that audience. Um, some communities have looked at filling teaching roles. Some communities have looked at filling medical roles. Some uh, communities have looked at recruiting veterans specifically using this program. But we'll get an idea of what we think we can do, and then I'll work with a, a local marketing firm to put together that, um, that you know, what we would, how we would reach out to these people, and we just have to have that filed in the state by the first week of December to see if we can get, receive that grant. On the Chamber of Commerce side, um, as you know, there's a couple changes taking place in the banks around here. And uh, so what that has done for us is we have $27,000 in gift certificates that are out in the community that haven't been cashed yet on a bank account that we need to move. So to help us do that, our partners at hy V have said that if you come into hy V between now and December 1st and you spend anywhere from $25 to $100 and use chamber gift certificates to pay for it, you'll get a 5% discount from hy V on whatever it is that you purchase. If you spend more than $100, you'll get a 10% discount on that. So hopefully folks will use those gift certificates to go in you know, over the next few weeks, get their groceries, get the discounts, and that'll help us out tremendously in regards to trying to deal with that with that bank account. So other pro you know, we'll have our we're gonna have our holiday lighting like we normally have in the past on a small business Saturday, and we will be doing a shop and win promotion through December just like we did last year. Details on that will be coming out soon. But uh, anyhow, so that's a quick update from the chamber. Did I make it in time? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to put you over right now. So. Yeah. Uh, I know we had an applicant off of your drive-through job fair. Yeah. Uh, how any? Yeah, we ended up giving out that? 25 um, packages on Saturday for the during the drive-through job fair, and then we've had a couple of other folks actually call our office this week and say, "Hey, I didn't make it, but can I come by and get a package?" So uh, we were able to get some distributed, and we may look at doing it again. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping that some of the folks who came by uh, took those packets home and are, uh, we had a split in audience between people who I could tell were looking for jobs and I had uh, people who were looking to probably get people out of their house. Making <laughs> 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 them job opportunities. Yeah. So. Very good. Any questions for Todd? Thank you very much for the updates. Mr. Weber with HMU, would you like to give yeah. us an update? Thank you. Uh, a couple of items. First of all, we've got a couple of meetings set up for tomorrow. Uh, the first one's uh, we're at 90 percent on our design for our piping, uh, our new well field. So we'll be meeting with the engineers tomorrow to review that, and make final application of the IDNR uh, for that part of the pro or that phase of the project. <clears throat> and then also tomorrow, 
uh, we'll be reviewing the uh, bid and scheduling the media replacement for that horizontal pressure filter number one and that would complete the bulk of the remediation on the water plant. Uh, we still have to order new membranes for the RO units, but uh, that, that's currently scheduled for fiscal year 22-23, uh, so like next July, we'll take a look at that again. Uh, as far as local work that we've got going on, <clears throat> we've uh, uh, been doing some work down around 12th and Hawkeye. Uh, that was an area that had some of the old, uh, what we call concentric cable, where we'd had a number of faults. Uh, and some problems there with the three phase, so uh, the crews have been working on that. Uh, we had a contractor out to put in conduit and then we installed the cable over the last couple of weeks. So it'll be good to get that area cleaned up. And then also uh, we uh, have been doing a lot of work up the house, Hanson House uh, on that expansion project, running three phase and getting the various services in. And then finally, uh, one of the upcoming projects is we're waiting for final numbers from the engineers. Uh, for an assessment of our old or of our 69 kV line down uh, from Avoca to Harlan, roughly 12 miles. That line's approaching 40 years old, so we'll be taking a look at the poles and the conductor connectors and uh, seeing what kind of maintenance we have have to uh, get scheduled for that. Uh, the biggest area of concern right now, I should say concern, but focus, is the part that's buried down by the east side of the airport. Uh, that uh, was installed at a time where it wasn't put in conduit, the cable. Uh, so we need to take a look at that, uh, make sure uh, the integrity of that system. Uh, that's just kind of a quick update. We're also working on, started our budget process, so yeah. we'll be working on that for the next couple of months. Very good. Any questions? Have to answer. Questions for Ken? Thank nope. you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to ask the council if they've got any updates or comments. Shout outs, whatever. No? I'll shout out to our fire department. Oh, yeah. People okay. get up in the middle of the night and uh, work many hours uh, as volunteers. Mm -hmm. Wonderful group of people that did a great job last night, anyway. So, yep. appreciate them. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience tonight or online, if there's anybody? Like to make any comments? Okay, seeing none then, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you.